Hello and welcome to day 29 of our preparation for total consecration. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Day 29. The Freedom of a Child of Mary. When you belong to the Immaculate, all that you can call your own becomes hers. You become her possession and property, always and in everything you do, and all your actions belong to her in a special way. God sees you in no other way than as belonging to her as a child of Mary. And although you truly belong to her, you must remember that she belongs to God, and all that is hers is God's. For this reason, she, with her whole heart, wants you to belong to Him. You must therefore let her guide you and inspire you to go to God, and to do so without any fear. Know that your consecration to her does not come at the price of your relationship with God or the saints. When you pray, it is under her guidance that you do so, and because you belong to her, you can pray directly to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, to the angels, or to any of the saints. You can do so not only without the least scruple, but with all the greater confidence, because you are always praying with her and in her. You are a member of a loving family in which there is no jealousy. When you pray to our Lord, know for a fact that it is the Immaculate who is inspiring you to pray to Him. When you pray to her, know that you bring great joy to our Lord. It is He who inspires you to pray to her. Be rid of your limited human way of thinking, so tainted by the experience of human misery and sin, so full of jealousy, rivalry, and competition. Let her guide you in your devotion, always remembering that you are a member of a loving family, the family of God, where there is no strife or competition. If we are hers and all that is ours is hers, then our Lord will accept everything from us as coming from her, as her own possession and property, whether you can remember this or not, whether you can understand it or not. You will always be seen by Jesus as the special, beloved property of His mother. And His love for you will be a special love. And our good mother will never leave our actions imperfect, but will make them worthy of herself, that is, immaculate, without the slightest blemish. For this reason you can be sure that even if you do not think of it, or remember it, or understand it, every prayer made by you to Jesus, and every action offered for love of Him, will bring an incomparably greater joy to His most sacred heart, than if you were not consecrated to His mother. As long as you do not deliberately exclude Our Lady's mediation, or revoke your total, wholehearted consecration to her, you can always be at peace. You must never worry about trying to constantly keep the awareness of her mediation on your mind, because you are incapable of doing this due to your limited human memory and intelligence. You can let your soul freely follow the inspiration of your heart, and all the more confidently approach the tabernacle, the cross, the crib, the Most Holy Trinity, and all other holy devotions approved by the Church. Because you do not approach on your own, but with her, as her child and possession. You can pray freely as the love of God inspires you, and the Holy Spirit, the one who removes all limits to your love, guides you and moves you. Let us now turn to page 85 for our daily prayers. If you can, please kneel down. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Act of Adoration of the Most Holy Trinity. I adore you, our Heavenly Father, because you have deigned to place in the most pure womb of Mary your only begotten Son. I adore you, O Son of God, because you condescended to enter the womb of Mary and became truly her actual Son. I adore you, O Holy Spirit, because you deign to form in her immaculate womb the body of the Son of God. I adore you, O Most Holy Trinity, O one God in the Holy Trinity, for having exalted the Immaculate in such a divine way. And I will never cease daily from the first moment I awake to adore you most humbly. 
O Divine Trinity, with my face to the ground, repeating three times. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Renewal of Baptismal Promises I reject sin, so as to live in the freedom of God's children. I reject the glamour of evil, and refuse to be mastered by sin. I reject Satan, Father and Prince of Darkness. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to you, and for all who do not have recourse to you, especially for the enemies of the Holy Church and those recommended to you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that concludes our preparation for day 29. In today's reflection, I'm going to share with you one of the most powerful devotions and titles of the Virgin Mary, Our Lady of Sorrows. According to Teresa of Avila, the most fruitful thing to meditate upon is the passion of Jesus Christ. And the best way for us to meditate upon that is with, in, and through the most pure heart of the Virgin Mary. Because Mary is immaculate, she never sinned. Her capacity to love was incredibly great. Because she loved God perfectly, and because Jesus was her son, the suffering that she experienced at the Passion of Christ was so extraordinary that St. Alphonsus, doctor of the church, says that the Virgin Mary suffered more than all of the other martyrs combined. Had God not prevented it, she would have died of sorrow that when she looked at Christ, because she was so pure, because she was so compassionate, every wound that he experienced, she experienced in a mystical way spiritually. So by having a devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows, what she does is she opens our heart, she opens our capacity to love, she opens our eyes to the depths of her love for Jesus, but even more profoundly, by seeing how much she loved Jesus, we begin to realize how much she loves me that she offered her son on the cross for my salvation, that she loves me so much, God, her child, the Word incarnate, was offered as a sacrifice simply so that she could call me her son, simply so that she could say to you, you are my well-beloved daughter. There are so many benefits of having a devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows. Let me share with you just a few. Our Lady of Sorrows will protect you from diabolical attacks. She will also help you to uproot your hidden vices. Because Our Lady of Sorrows is rooted in the prophecy of Simeon, that very first sorrow where he said, a sword will pierce your own heart also, so that the thoughts of many might be revealed. That gift of prophecy that we discussed in the charismatic section of the videos, we talked about hearing the voice of God so that I could know God's will and do God's will and so that God will be glorified and the church will grow. By having a devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows, you will hear the voice of God more clearly. You will hear the voice of the Virgin Mary whisper to you little things that you should do to help other souls. And you will hear pointed out your faults that you need to work on. Also, you will have a greater love for sinners. Because you don't want Our Lady to be sad, and you see how wounded she is to lose any soul, and you've spent time with her crying at the foot of the cross, your desire to make sacrifices, to reach out to souls who are lost or are in trouble, will increase greatly. Your fear of the cross, your fear of suffering, your fear of sacrificing will begin to dissolve. 
Our Lady also made several promises to several saints throughout history. Some of those include bringing peace into your family. Some of those include being with you with every undertaking that you do, every work that you do, Mary promises her presence. She promises you a happy and holy death and all the graces necessary for salvation. If you will simply have compassion on her by spending time with her, walking with her in the path of Jesus Christ. When you look at an image of Our Lady of Sorrows, you will often see her with a sword through her heart. Sometimes you'll see her with seven swords in her heart. She suffered way more than seven times, but there are seven moments throughout the New Testament that are marked as being especially excruciating. Everybody honors Our Lady in different ways. I'm going to give you a couple of ways. I'm not saying that you must do these, but these are ways that can be done that you should discern. So the easiest and the most basic way to honor her is simply by putting up an image of the sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary in your home. Also, you can adjust the way you pray. So instead of saying Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us, you can say Sorrowful and Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Now, the more popular ways of having a devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows. And then I'm going to share with you the one that really stabbed me in the heart, and that's when she totally won me over to this devotion. The most popular prayers to Our Lady of Sorrows all revolve around her seven sorrows. So one way to honor her seven sorrows, which we will cover in a moment, is by praying one Hail Mary for each of her seven sorrows. Another way is to pray a seven sorrows rosary, also known as the Servite rosary, which is seven Hail Marys for each of her seven sorrows. The way I learned about Our Lady of Sorrows devotion, when I was reading a book on Our Lady and I came across something called The Irresistible Novena, and I really caught my attention with a title like Irresistible Novena, that's a really good salesman. So to pray this irresistible novena, it was very simple. You only had to do three things. You state your intention, you pray a seven sorrows rosary, and then you pray a litany to Our Lady of Sorrows. Well, I was so moved by the seven sorrows rosary that when after my novena was over, I made it a resolution for myself to pray the seven sorrows rosary every single morning. And that seven sorrows rosary really is the highlight of my prayer for the entire day. I received so many insights and so many inspirations. I found that when meditating upon the seven sorrows of the Virgin Mary and doing it from her perspective, that my heart was incredibly moved and my soul received so many more lights than I would normally receive in prayer. And that I would pray in the morning, even though I was exhausted, I would do my seven sorrows and all of these wonderful inspirations would come to me. For example, it was during my Seven Sorrows Rosary in the morning that I got the idea to do this 33-day consecration and to make it available to all of you. If you need something that's really going to push you, that's going to help you to grow in the spiritual life, I truly recommend praying the Seven Sorrows Rosary. It would be helpful to get a Seven Sorrows Rosary. This one is from Rugged Rosaries. There are others that you can get on Etsy and other Catholic stores. This just happens to be the one that I have. I really like it. It's durable. Before we conclude, let us briefly go through the Seven Sorrows of the Virgin Mary. And I'm going to give you tips on how to remember them. So the first sorrow of the Virgin Mary is the prophecy of Simeon, where he says, a sword shall pierce your own heart also. This is Mary's first true and deep sorrow when she finds out from the prophet that her son will be the cause of the fall and the rise of many in Israel and that he was going to be a stumbling block. So from that moment on, Our Lady understood that her son was going to be persecuted. All of the great saints say, especially St. Alphonsus, he says, at that moment, Everything that Mary did was tinged with sorrow, knowing the great suffering that he was going to experience. The second sorrow of the Blessed Virgin Mary is pretty easy to remember because it's kind of like a twofold sorrow. The second sorrow, a twofold sorrow. One is the massacring of the innocents, that her son Jesus Christ, the living God, became man to redeem man. And the very people he came to redeem are trying to kill him. And because of that, innocent people, innocent children, are going to be killed. And then add to that that they have to flee to Egypt. They have to leave their family. They have to leave their friends. They have to go in the middle of the night through desert and treacherous terrain where there's no places to sleep or to eat, all alone to a foreign country where they know nobody and have to make a new life. That is the second sorrow. And I will add, 
So when you're doing the seven sorrows and you're meditating upon them, this is a great time to do your mental prayer. Imagine as if you're walking with the Virgin Mary in the desert and you see her holding the baby Jesus and she's riding on a donkey or on a camel and then St. Joseph is walking next to you. It's a great time to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And again, address your prayers to Mary in that scene. When I pray for somebody, I like to imagine them in the arms of the Virgin Mary, just like the baby Jesus. And I say, Blessed Mother, protect this person just as you protected the baby Jesus from Herod and his goons. The third sorrow of the Virgin Mary is losing Jesus for three days. If anybody has had the experience of losing a child, even for two minutes, you're in a grocery store, where did my daughter go? Where did my son go? Oh my goodness, your heart goes up into your throat. It's terrible, it's terrible, it's terrible. The Virgin Mary was without Jesus for three entire days. We can only imagine the anxiety and the anguish that she experienced. Again, while you're praying, imagine that you're walking with her. Imagine that you're trying to help her find the child Jesus. And there, in that little scene, in that meditation, talk to her there about your problems. She's so good, even when she's looking for Jesus, I bet she's helping people. And I give you my word, she'll be helping you. The fourth sorrow of the Blessed Virgin Mary is easy to remember because it's also the fourth sorrow of the Holy Rosary. And you imagine Jesus carrying the cross and you look at the face of the Virgin Mary. And remember, Our Lady suffered the same things that He experienced physically in a spiritual sense. She loved Him so much to see Him, oh my gosh, He's got a crown of thorns, it would hurt her head. To see all these wounds all over Him, to see Him struggling to carry that cross. Have your conversations with Jesus and Mary there. Pray your Hail Marys, it's so fruitful. The fifth sorrow of the Blessed Virgin Mary is the crucifixion and death of Jesus on the cross. That was a place where the greatest suffering in the history of humanity ever happened. On the cross, yes, but also at the foot of the cross. Our Lady experienced the greatest agony. Archbishop Fulton Sheen says that on that day, with one lance, two hearts were pierced. To see the creator of the universe being killed by creatures, to see your child being killed, unbelievable agony. So many insights can be gained by spending time with Mary at the foot of the cross. The sixth sorrow of the Blessed Virgin Mary is removing Jesus from the cross and the Virgin Mary holding the dead Jesus in her arms. The shock and the anguish to have the body of Christ really present, but no real presence for Jesus not to be in there. Oh, it must have been a terrible moment for Our Lady to hold His dead body in her arms. Meditate on that with her. Sit there on the floor with her. Put your arm around her. Put your arm around Jesus. Experience that moment with Mary. And then finally, the seventh sorrow of Our Lady is the burial of Jesus in the tomb. When I meditate upon this, I like to sit with Our Lady just looking at the tomb closed. So much sadness, but at the same time, a little spark of hope is welling up from within the soul saying, he's coming back. This wasn't for nothing. He's coming back and you can be assured that she's gonna help you in your times of darkness. Again, no pressure about adding any of these devotions. These are things that you need to discern what's right for your own life. I just want to present it to you so that you know what's available. If you have a devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows or you pray a Seven Sorrows Rosary, I would love to hear about that in the comments. Sorrowful and Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. God bless you, God love you, and we will see you tomorrow.